Hello my friends, welcome to The Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you here today. Now, if you've already subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate your support. This is a new channel and obviously we've only been around for a few months. So the subscriber numbers are still fairly low, but they're increasing daily. So thank you for your support. Awesome, appreciate it. Now, there's a brilliant article in Clean Technica called 10 Reasons to Love Water Batteries. I first saw this headline and I thought, Water batteries, ah, they're referring to dams or rivers. But basically a water battery is hydropower. And this comes straight to you from Clean Technica, one of the best websites anywhere that you'll find for renewable energy and EV information. They don't publish clickbait. That's one of the things I love about them. Every summer, millions of people across the country stay indoors to keep cool and stay healthy. In a summer like 2021's record setting heat wave, there's nothing more satisfying than the feeling of a crisp air conditioned room. But heat is not just inconvenient, it can be dangerous. In the United States, more than 600 people die of extreme heat every year. And that number could climb because of the effects of climate change. If everyone cranks up their air conditioning or turns on fans, the grid which shuttles our electricity from place to place can short circuit, putting millions at risk from hospitals, grocery stores, to nursing homes, and even our schools. Now, fortunately here in Australia, or Adelaide in Australia, was one of the worst places in the world for grid shutting down, or at least in the Western world, for grid shutting down when the air conditioning was turned on. So what would happen is in Adelaide, they would have 40 Celsius plus degree days, 45 degrees even. People would come back from work, turn on their air conditioning, the grid would shut down. Pika plants come in. Those pika plants are fossil fuel powered take a while to come online and charge astronomical amounts of money. Tesla came along, said to the Adelaide government, we can build a battery for you in 100 days that will basically solve this problem. It'll provide you with instant peak of energy, potentially from clean renewable energy. It is now actually run primarily by clean renewable energy, mostly by solar. And we can significantly reduce your power costs as a result. In fact, Elon even promised to build the battery within 100 days or give their money back to the Adelaide government. Anyway, Tesla delivered. The battery became the biggest battery in the world. And only a year later, after making an astronomical amount of money from the battery and it being a huge success, even though it was mocked, ridiculously mocked by our prime minister, it worked, really worked. So they doubled the size of the battery. But by then, it was no longer a big battery. There was, af there was soon after that, much, much bigger batteries all around the world. And one of the reasons why is because this pilot plant, you could say, really worked. Now, one of the other biggest ways our grids avoid short-circuiting short is water batteries. Pumped storage hydropower is the most dominant form of energy storage on the electric grid today. It also plays an important role in bringing more renewable energy sources to the grid. Now, also known as pumped storage hydropower, Water batteries are made of two big pools of water, one high above the other, that act like an hourglass to provide power. They're some of the biggest batteries on the planet. And that's just one of the many reasons we love pumped storage hydropower, and you should too. In honor of National Hydropower Day on August 24, Clean Technica provides you with 10 reasons to appreciate how important and powerful water batteries are and why we need to continue investing in these important resources all across the world. And this article actually comes from the US Department of Energy. So kudos to them for supporting renewable energy. Reason number one we should support these kinds of batteries, water batteries, is grid overload. Thanks to water batteries, it's actually rare in the United States. When other energy sources like solar and wind make more electricity than nearby homes need, that extra power pushes the water up into the water batteries top pool where it waits charging the water battery it's genius because realistically within probably a decade we will have superpower if you don't know what superpower is then i'll put a link in the description below to a video telling you all about superpower now superpower is the fact that the concept that once we build out enough battery energy storage which is around about four hours around the world so you could say once the United States has an average of four hours of battery storage per home or per business. That will mean that we actually have on most days of the year, 200% more energy than we need. What are we going to do with this 200% energy? Well, we can use it for things like 
battery storage, right? Water storage, pumping that water back up and then storing that water as an enormous battery until we need it. So when we need it, like during a grid gutting heat wave or during a time of extreme lack of sunlight, could be the worst couple of weeks of winter, then the water is released from that top pool. It flows down, spinning a turbine that creates electricity to power your lights, your refrigerator, and everything else that needs energy. Number two, Mother Nature is no problem for water batteries. Renewable energy is crucial for a clean energy future. But sometimes Mother Nature makes it challenging. Water batteries can fill energy gaps on cloudy and still days, making sure that clean energy is still reliable energy. Number three, pumped storage hydropower provides 93% right now of US energy storage. 93%, now that's a huge number, but within probably 24 months, it will comprise around about 80%. That figure will continue to come down as more of the massive energy storage, massive battery storage projects are deployed around the United States, deployed around Australia. In fact, Australia and the United States are the two countries that are really leading the way in this area. You can just imagine the enormous increase in the number of batteries we have worldwide, guys and girls, once the cost of batteries declines further. And it's continuing to decline. Probably in five years from now, by my estimates, my numbers, the cost of battery storage solutions around the world will be 50% lower than what it is now, making them incredibly economically viable. Number four, the United States of water batteries. In 2021, 18 states and all major regions of the country used pumped hydro storage, hydropower to store energy. California, Virginia, and South Carolina get the most out of these clean energy pools. And three new states have projects in progress, which will bring the total up to 21. Number five, in the United States, pump storage hydropower can store up to 553 gigawatt hours of energy. That could power video gaming across the entire country for seven days or a week. Every year, American video gamers use about as much energy as 85 million refrigerators or 5 million cars. Number six, pump storage is the most efficient large energy storage system currently available, clocking in at 70 to 80% depending on the project. Because it takes energy to store energy, no storage system, not even batteries, are 100% efficient. Pumping water into a battery's top reservoir requires a burst of energy. Still, a good 80% of what goes up comes back down. They're super efficient. Number seven, hydropower and pump storage facilities provide 40% of the power needed to jumpstart a grid after a blackout. Ice storms, wildfires, and even hackers could stop the electric grid from powering our homes and offices. When emergencies knock out other energy sources, water batteries can turn on fast to keep people safe and comfortable and also to make your electricity cheaper. Peak appliances are incredibly expensive. Number eight, natural disasters are no match for hydropower and pump storage's flood control and irrigation benefits. Water batteries can save you from those too. They help absorb that extra water and use it to power your home or help you put out those wildfires that can harm the grid. Now the pools of water can also give clean water to crops and you to making sure you don't go thirsty during a heat wave. Number nine, US pump storage hydropower grew without any new construction. How does that work? Through capacity increases or upgrades to facilities that make them more powerful, basically installing new tech. From 2010 to 2019, upgrades at just six Pump storage facilities led to 1,400 megawatt in capacity increase for U.S. pump storage. So upgrades at only six facilities led to 1,400 megawatt increase. That's incredible. Imagine if they upgraded all of them. Now that means that within the capacity of U.S. pump storage, without a single bit of new construction, pump storage grew by almost as much as all the other types of energy storage combined. Wow. Number 10, water batteries are almost a century old. 90 years old in fact. The first US water battery, dubbed the 10 mile storage battery, popped up in Connecticut in 1930. Almost a century later, water batteries still provide energy at a low price. Here's to the next 90. Now, I don't believe that's true. I believe water batteries have actually been around for thousands of years. And who knows who invented the first one. Now, pumped hydro is a well-proven tech that has supported fossil fuels for decades. 
and can now support renewables. That's the great thing about it. Personally, I'm really looking forward to more gravity-based storage coming in the future and more upgrades to current plants to get way more power out of those plants with very minimal cost and construction. I hope you've learned something today. I certainly have. I'll put a link in the description below to the article on Clean Technica. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.